to 3.7 billion years. That's still, you know, we ain't supposed to be here. No human life, something intelligent enough to create the balls and draw those lines around it shouldn't be on this planet. So the whole thing is fishy and they, you know, discount it by not talking about it and putting it off. This is something that we can't do. It fits into everything. Now, what we do know for sure, and this may be hard for some people to accept, is the evolutionary path that they do give us, no matter who or what put the bacteria here or put the uh, ingredients here to create insects and create animals and create dinosaurs, no matter what put it here, that evolutionary timeline is basically correct. Meaning that um, primates, we do share primate DNA. Now, we did not evolve, and I'll tell you this too, we didn't evolve from primates, we share a common ancestor. What the fuck does that mean? Now, and again, the problem with us evolving or having this um, primate DNA is, or chimp DNA, they say, you know, the, our last uh, living ancestor is the chimp. So um, the problem with us sharing this DNA again is the fact that we can't find this common ancestor. Now, we have a fossil record and you have to really think about it. You know, a long time ago, remember, the earth has its layer crust and you know um eventually once all that cooled and everything we get our first land mass what happened is you had life eventually spring up but remember volcanoes erupted and you had a bunch of you know lava and eventually dirt and everything cover those fossils or cover those bodies and then you know it happened again and again and again and again and you have layers upon layers and layers of earth that's basically covering the bodies, the fossils, the remains of former life that was here on this planet. So the deeper we drill, we can tell, you know, what period in time that these specific animals live. And we know we do this all the time with dinosaurs. The thing is, if dinosaurs live millions of years ago, even if they live during the time uh, where they coexisted with us, we have been digging up dinosaur remains for, you know, hundreds of years, long time. Now, we've been finding fossilized remains of animals going millions and millions of years back. If we evolved from this missing link, we should have by now found its body. We have not. We have not found the body of the missing link. Not just that. When you look at the chart... You see these evolutionary lines. Look at the primates. You see everything that they uh, came from. You know, we not only, as I said, this line should not be here, it should be gone. But we not only have a missing link. We don't have the evolutionary line that that missing link would have come from. So we know something is up here. OK, so let's cut straight to the point. Bottom line, human life was not created here on earth it had to be created somewhere else now the dna that we share with these animals these animals was created here earth at some point was terraformed i believe it was terraformed a couple times and it was terraformed to create the atmosphere that was needed to create first the animal life and then our life to sustain us and we were put here for whatever reason we'll get into you know much later we got a lot to deal with so they terraformed this planet and that's what all of the research shows. We have so many different climate changes that occurred. We had dinosaurs being here, giant dinosaurs, these giant lizards for what? Created for what? Now, they want you to believe that, you know, evolution just happened and for no particular reason at all, all this stuff just evolved out of nowhere. What we do know is these animals did evolve here. There was something was placed here. They were intentionally uh, developed here, but we wasn't. We was created somewhere not on this planet, and all of the facts point to that. We share this DNA, but the missing link is the key to understanding this thing, and we don't find that missing link. It's just nowhere to be found. Common sense should tell you something is up, that we find animal fossils millions of years old, but we don't find the remains of this missing link that really should be in abundance when you think about the sheer number of primates that exist. I mean, so many places. So 
from my research and you'll begin to to agree as we go along. I don't think we was created here at all. Now, I talked about how they did a DNA sequencing of the green anole, and they found out that we share a lot of DNA with not just it, but a lot of other animals as well. Uh, we share DNA with cats, mice, cows, uh, opossums, platypuses, and, you know, um, reptiles. So um, a lot of people don't understand why we used to dissect frogs. Well, all the time in high school, you always see it. You got to dissect frogs in high school. It's because we we share similar uh, muscular systems and um, skeletal systems and uh, nervous systems. When you look at them, it almost look identical to human uh, systems. So, you know, dissecting the frogs was the way to figure that out. Now, they always talk about how life climbed out of this primordial soup and began to evolve and walk around and stuff like that. So, you know, they tell us, that uh, these single cell bacteria, the single cell organisms evolved and, you know, out of the waters, we started getting life and, you know, eventually plants and animals and cattle and stuff like that. And then uh, eventually us humans. Now, the thing is, when you pay attention to the Bible, it's telling you basically the same thing, which is why, you know, it's funny how people get confused when you look at the Bible. And they don't really pay attention to evolution because they have been told by religion that evolution is the devil. So if they would have paid attention and then looked at evolution, then went back to the Bible, they would have been like, well, wait a minute. The Bible is basically telling us the same thing. You look at Genesis 120, it's basically talking about how the waters brought forth an abundance of of life and you know life came out of the waters and you look at uh, uh 124 you get the animals start to come about and god created the cattle and stuff like that then you look at genesis 126 you see that god created man and then you start looking at you know what that pertains to and it says that god formed man from the dust of the crown and everything about the creation of man you know shows fabrication and um, remember, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So, you know, that is a conscious thing to say right there that we are specifically going to make man a certain way. And that certain way it's going to be in our image. It implies creation, not evolution or, you know, us evolving from this bacteria. So it's really implying that when you pay attention to what it's saying and, uh, when you look at, remember I talked about the first creation when, you know, God said, let us make man. But then you have another creation where Adam is created from the dust of the ground and um, Eve is created from his rib. So you have two creations. One, God is basically making man in his image after his likeness. And then another creation where you have Adam being made from the dust of the ground. Now, the whole thing is, is one different from the other? And we went into th uh, this whole thing. And you got to look at that and say, well, wait a minute. One group of humans was made in the image of God. Then another was made from the dust of the ground, meaning fabrication. So, as I was saying, when you go back and look, there was a group of people. Obviously, before the people who came out, um of the whatever event that happened on this planet, whatever destroyed the earth. Now, we don't know if that first group of people was gods. If you created in the image of God, then you are a God. You're supposed to be God-like. And remember, the Egyptians talk about this civilization that created the pyramids, them being gods and them having this knowledge and power. The second creation is still being called man, but it's a fabrication of man made from the dust, dust of the ground. So basically implying that I took some stuff from the ground, from the earth to create these people. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Understand where I'm going with this. So when you go back and look at everything, it's obvious something existed before us that was powerful. That was a different type of being and it's gone, whatever that was. And if you want to call the uh, sun God or um, the power of the sun God, you would think that these people possess that kind of power. But then uh, you have this fabrication of this same kind of life it's supposed to be the same kind that's created 
and given rules and everything like that. Told to go till the ground and follow these rules and obey. It's the same as us. The story, as I said, the Bible is trying to tell you what happened. But you got to know how to look at real life and separate the two. But we really got to look into what the Bible is telling us because it's the key. As I said, these people know. They know already. We're trying to figure it out. They know. And obviously, they left behind the pieces for us to figure it out. We just got to know how to put it together. Now, we know we share DNA with animals. That much is proven. But there's a large part of our DNA that they have no clue what it is. Remember, they tell us that 97% of our DNA is basically junk DNA. Like, we don't know what it's for. It's not coding enzymes and proteins, so it's junk DNA. And um, junk DNA is, is still DNA. It should be, you know, used for something. Now, the whole reason why they tell us that is the junk DNA is the missing link. They know that that junk DNA is alien DNA. This is something that I put together on my own back in 2005. And I came to that conclusion just thinking critically and looking at everything. And I said that, you know, this junk DNA shit must be the DNA or, or be DNA that they can't find on this planet. You have to really start to think about the fact that we can go deep into the earth and pull out uh, fossils or they can go pull out a fucking 10 million year old mosquito, draw the DNA from it and tell you exactly what kind of dinosaur that that uh, mosquito sucked on. You have ancient human remains. You mean to tell me you can't tell us who this common ancestor is that we have? It doesn't make sense. So I came to the conclusion that obviously that DNA must not be from this planet. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you have as well. Now, the thing is, you know, uh, mainstream scientists, you know, started coming out talking about this, but not in mainstream forms, of course. So now I want to read center here. Scientists have found an alien code in our DNA. Ancient engineers. It says, according to mainstream scientists, alien code found in our DNA, extraterrestrial beings created our species. Researchers who work for 13 years in the human genome project indicate that they came across an amazing scientific discovery. They believe that the so-called 97% of non-coding sequence sequences in a human DNA is nothing less than the genetic code of extraterrestrial life forms. It makes sense to me. Originally referred to as junk DNA. Its uh, function uh, remained a mystery for researchers. Now researchers believe that our DNA is extraterrestrial in origin. After extensive analysis with the hope, with the help of uh, other researchers in diverse fields such as mathematics, chemistry, and programming, uh, Maxim A. Uh, Makukov of the Fezenkov Astrophysical Institute have ventured out and ask if there is a possibility that what we call junk DNA is actually some sort of extraterrestrial code created by an alien program. And when you look at a lot of people's research who get into this, even if you want to go into uh, people like uh, David Icke, who talks about, you know, uh, this earth being like an illusory uh, reality uh, we, we've been programmed and stuff like that. Remember, as I talked about in the whole um, uh, uh, mystery school DVD, uh, DVD about everything is math. So when you start looking at everything, we talking about codes. Remember, a computer program is just ones and zeros, binary codes based off. That's the platform. Everything we're talking about is math. Math is just all over us. Then you can really start getting into these codes. No matter how you want to put it, when you break it down, it's going to lead to math. So codes is it's, it's not real easy for people to wrap their head around that. Well, what do you mean coding? I mean, that sounds stupid. But when you understand that everything is math, do you understand when they say codes, they mean that we can really literally map out everything and put it into on paper as a code that's going to uh, give you something. And um, to see, you know, when I saw that article and it's a couple of articles and I'm going to read them all and you can look uh, for yourself. When I saw this article, when I look for more, because obviously you want other sources, I was like, well, damn. I mean, they basically came out and, and, and said it. And the reason why is because people already know 
and people already sus- suspect it, and you can't keep high in this stuff. Remember, the rule of the occult, one of the major things they want is the truth must be revealed for whatever reason. They want the truth to come out. As long as it's not by somebody who's on the inside, they don't give a damn to some degree. But this is something that people had already knew and they couldn't hide it no more. And um, the fact that it was mainstream scientists and it was um, because you had a lot of independent scientists before them, as you'll find out, who was already talking about this stuff and coming out about it. They can't shut up the mainstream scientists. I mean, the uh, independent uh, researchers, because that's us. That's people like you and me. If, if you just went to school and got your PhD and learned about astrophysics, uh, physics and, um, you learned about biology and astronomy or what have you, you just became this genius scientist, you know, on your own and work for yourself and start putting out stuff. I mean, they can't stop people from doing that. And there's so many people who do that. And, um, the problem is if you want to have a successful career, after you spent so long in school, you got to follow the rules. You got to keep your mouth shut. You got to do what they tell you to do. If you want to work at university or teach, you got to follow the game plan. So we don't get so many um, big name scientists or major uh, credible researchers to come out and give us information like this. But since we do have a few and since regular people with a brain who didn't go to school and get a big Ph.D. and all that stuff is putting this stuff together. Eventually, of course, it was going to come out, but, you know, it was good to read that and had that kind of validation. But it's common sense. We have this coded DNA that they're telling us 97 percent of it. They can't figure out what the hell it is, huh? But you also can't find me the missing link. So that DNA must be it. So we know in the book of Genesis, God is saying, let us create man in our image after our likeness. And he created man and told man to go be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, implying, again, that something was here on earth and it was destroyed and it had to be replenished. Life had to be replenished. Now, again, we can go back to Pangea. Pangea supported life. There was life on Pangea before um, it was destroyed, before it was wiped out. It is the largest uh, known uh, loss of life in human history. It's the largest recorded. I mean, this is real deal. I mean, we know this happened. It is the most uh, you'll ever find of a civilization or a, a bunch of life being wiped out in the history of our planet that we can actually prove. That was Pangea. So if you look at that, when you look at the Bible saying, you know, let us make man our image and go be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. That was, remember, that first creation. So, again, when we go back and look at everything and it's talking about the um, cyanobacteria uh, creating life that would eventually leave the waters and evolve on land and become, you know, so many different life forms. I mean, it's two things that basically don't fit when you look into the whole thing. One is it's very hard for them to prove the existence of these dinosaurs um, or how they came into existence. Again, it's tough to go from such a microscopic life form to these huge dinosaurs. So that's one thing that is puzzle, puzzling and they can't tell you exactly that whole process of how, it, you know, how it happened. It involves too much speculation as far as the atmosphere playing a large role in these huge uh, dinosaurs. And of course, the second thing would be us. You know, it doesn't fit when you look at um the missing link that we cannot find. As I said, I honestly believe and scientists are alluding to that that's alien DNA and that we were created somewhere. They terraformed this planet to create the life that they would use to then create us. And this is what we are seeing. And they are hiding that fact with this whole 97% DNA that they, oh, it's junk DNA. We don't know what the hell it is. Does it make sense? So it's funny how they hide stuff, you know, in plain sight. I mean, when I had this knowledge of this information, and, you know, I'm, I kept researching. I mean, for a minute, I was basically a uh, evolutionist. I believed in evolution, but I knew it was just some issues with it um, as far as us, the creation of human beings. But then when I saw this movie and the opening scene just blew me away. So this is why I always use Prometheus in my a lot of my videos because they give away so much that I can't believe they talk about and they validate so much in that movie. You have this, these aliens. If you've seen the, uh, full scene, 
you have the um these aliens come in. It's an uncut scene where it's more aliens than uh just him who uh come in and something happens and he you know, you see what happens. And the movie is basically about these people who find out that it's uh aliens that created us. So they go to one of the moons of Saturn on a ship called Prometheus. And coincidentally, um one of the moons of Saturn is called Prometheus, you know, after the Greek god. Now, when they get to this planet, which they basically trying to tell you is one of the moons of Saturn because they fly right past Saturn uh, in the movie. But when they get there, they go onto the planet and they find this place where they are basically uh, the aliens are basically terraforming this place to sustain uh, this alien life. And then when the humans get there, they realize that it's the same kind of conditions or atmosphere as Earth. And they are able to breathe it. They don't need the, uh, their suits or whatever. And then they find out these aliens was basically, uh, destroyed by what they was creating. And they take back one of the aliens and do a DNA test. And they do, um, uh, find out for sure that those aliens, uh, or we came from those aliens, you know, by DNA. So it was perfect match. So it's funny because I was talking about in part one and part two, how, um, scientists and everybody talked about how Earth was uh before uh, one of the moons of Saturn. And we know about uh, Titan is supposed to be exactly like Earth and Titan is one of the moons of Saturn. But it was supposed to be closer. Earth was supposed to be closer to Saturn. And uh, you could see Saturn clearly from Earth. And there's a lot of uh, scientists and researchers and uh, astrologists who talked about this. So, I mean, it's everything here. When you start putting it all together, it's just it just fits stuff. Start fitting together in the pieces. Start fitting together when you look at just that one movie because they had a lot of stuff in movies. And then all of the information that we gather on this particular subject, when you start putting it together, it's like, well, wait a minute. I mean, we know something is up with Saturn. It's no way around that. We know about the whole Saturnalian Brotherhood, how Hitler was in a Saturn, how we see Saturn everywhere, all in company logos. Saturn is Satan. And it's so much into that. So we know it got to be something going on with that planet. It's humongous. So it's possible. It's possible um, that it can sustain and uh, support life. We heard about these black extraterrestrials, the ring makers of Saturn, that's supposed to come from there. And um, how, you know, I was talking about before how they are, they were possibly the uh, original ancient Egyptians. We look at the hieroglyphs and you see these giant uh, Egyptian beings. And as I talked about, you know, many people believe that they came to Earth and uh, created us somehow or came here. And because of the atmosphere here, the um, Egyptians that was born here, you know, were born small because of the atmosphere. So many theories, so much. We're going to get into that a, a lot more later on as we go. Not in this video, but in other videos, because there's a lot more to that that fits in a lot of a lot of places. But it was funny when I saw this movie. It was like, man, it was like. Boom. There is that extra little, you know, push that I needed to really uh, follow this subject more when I seen that opening and seeing them put that DNA into the water. Now, understand that double helix is all of our DNA. It's not just human DNA. When you see that, you know, uh, animal DNA looks the same as far as the uh, double helix strand and everything like that. It's just, you know, the uh, symbol of DNA, how it looks. So, um that could be anything that was in the water, you know, when a movie first starts up and you see the DNA form. We don't know exactly what that was. Could be human, could be um, animal. We don't know. But it's, it's saying that aliens came and basically um, did something to um, put this DNA signature on the planet. And as I was saying in the beginning, something had to be introduced to this planet in order for this kind of life to spring up. You know, after 3.5 billion years. Now, I don't just put my stock in a movie. It's a lot of other things that you have to consider. One of the things that really puts the dagger in this whole thing for me, as far as it pertains to humans, is the evolution part of it. I mean, you have to really think about it. I mean, we have, they're telling us that, you know, we evolved from these single, single celled, uh, bacteria. And we know we have, we can't get a, no way around that. We have, uh, chimp DNA. You just can't ignore the chimp DNA, the primate DNA. We have that DNA. So just, there's no way around that. So we can see that clear. But the thing is, 
you're talking about um, the evolution of this bacteria uh, into these more complex organisms. So when you look at the world and the fact that this this stuff was happening all over the world, this bacteria was growing. The problem is the conditions in some parts of the world were different from other parts of the world, meaning that you had some bacteria grow millions of years later than other uh, bacteria in other places. So that being the case, what we should see is the evolution uh, in some places being complete and in other places, you know, being in the middle stages or the beginning stages. So we should see stages of evolution. We don't see that. We see it seems like everything just evolved together, which that wouldn't make sense. Now, you would have to think that since there are primates in other places than Africa, why is it that life began first in Africa and not in other places as well? We got to think about that. So if evolution is the way they say it is and we evolve from these um uh, primates or we share this uh, common ancestor with primates and we evolve from whatever that ancestor is, then we should see life, human life and other places of the world. We shouldn't be able to definitively say that civilization began in Africa. The only way you can say that is if something put civilization in Africa, if life was purposely started there. Now, we know the first beings were melanated beings. So the best place for you to put a, metal, a melanated uh, being will be in Africa, where the sun is in abundance. So that's one thing right there. But if evolution is going on all over the planet, as they say, we should see life in many other places besides just Africa. And the fact that we don't see that tells me something is up. We should see the progression, the evolution of life all over. We don't see that. You should see stages. We should be able to find the uh, result of the chimp and the missing link mating and that process of whatever it, you know, what became from it. And they tell us that, uh, Australopithecus would be that next, um, uh, life that was created from the missing link in his chimp, these primates. So we get Australopithecus and then you see the progression, you know, after that, the rest of the, uh, you know, the homo progression. And still the missing link is gone conveniently. Not only is the missing link gone conveniently, but the whole line that it would come from is missing. So we don't have the missing link. So that's gone. But we don't also have where that missing link comes from. So to me, that right there, if you follow what I'm saying, it was kind of confusing. <laughs> that right there tells me that, um, yeah, we definitely didn't come from here because it just doesn't fit. We should have found by now. And we can go back, as I said, and find, dig up 30 million year old dinosaur bones, right? And, uh, reconstruct an entire, you know, Tyrannosaurus and know exactly how it looked and the color skin was and all kinds of stuff like that. You mean to tell me we can't reconstruct how the missing link should have looked or would have looked and we can't find an evolutionary path that it took and where it came from. We, they don't give us none of that. You got to realize that it's not here. It's not on, it's not on the chart. We don't know what it looked like. We don't know what it evolved from or where it came from. It's just missing. And that's how they deal with it. They just don't put nothing there because they never had to explain anything they put there and they know it's not going to add up. So now to put this into perspective and be a little bit more clear about it, we all know about Pokemon. If you don't know about Pokemon, I don't know where you've been the last, you know, 20 years or so. Uh, Pokemon, everybody knows about Charmander. So with the evolution of Charmander, you have Charma Charmander, Charmander, uh, uh, Charmillion, you have Charizard and you have Mega Charizard, which is, uh, they added recently. So you can see the evolution of Charmander. You can see Charmander, Charmillion, Charizard, and, uh, Mega Charizard. So boom. If you go to Pokemon Land, you will be able to find all of these, uh, evolved forms of Charizard and you know where they came from. Now with us, it's like, well, wait a minute. We got, um, Mega Charizard, we got a uh, Charmander, 
but uh, Charmillion and uh, Charizard is gone. We we can't find them nowhere. They don't exist. So it would be like, well, wait a minute. How does Charmander go to Mega uh, Charizard? We we can't find an evolutionary path for that to take place. So how did it happen? And then they're telling us that, well, it takes millions and billions of years for Charmander to evolve into a Mega Charizard. And it's like, huh? So when you look at the whole evolu- evolutionary scale they give us for us humans, and we've all seen this before, we, we've all seen it, and it really shouldn't look like that. It should look more like this, uh, to tell you the truth. But these guys, these missing links, I mean, we can't find them. We can't dig up any kind of resemblance or anything that resembles this half ape looking human thing. And as I said, we've been digging up dinosaur dinosaur bones for, you know, hundreds of years. By now, we should have found the remains of a hybrid or half eight looking uh the evolved form, I should say, of this, you know, this eight looking thing to a human. <laughs> if you understand what I'm trying to say, we should have seen it. We should have found it by now. So many people around the world digging up bones all the time, digging up so much stuff. We don't find nothing. We don't find nothing, not, nothing at all. We don't have anything to tie that whole thing into uh, existence. It just, it don't exist. And, um, you know, when you look at the, the scale in the chart, I mean, you pay attention. They're telling us one that we didn't evolve from, uh, chimps or primates. We have a common ancestor. But when you look at the chart, I mean, what is that first animal? It looks like a chimp to me. So if we didn't evolve from it. What is it doing there? So, I mean, what the, what that line should be that you're looking at, what a lot of people don't realize because they put stuff right in front of your face and they think you're stupid. How can they show this? How could this even be created when we don't know what the missing link is and we don't know uh, where it came from? This whole uh, evolution line implies that all of these things before the human is that missing link that basically at some point must have made it with chimpanzees to give us a uh, homo or australopithecus. But, you know, right now, really, you have homo australopithecus and then the evolution of that to us. It's a missing link. This this is like so wrong. <laughs> It shouldn't even exist, you know, in common sense. How can you create this when we don't even know what the missing link is? And, and if we didn't evolve from chimpan- chimpanzees, then what is a chimpanzee uh, doing at the beginning of the evolutionary scale? That doesn't make sense. And that they don't explain in the drawing that it's trying to say, well, it's a common ancestor that you share. You know, it doesn't fit. They know you don't give a shit. They know people are too stupid to figure this stuff out. And you're just going to go along with the old smart scientists who got a PhD or what have you. It doesn't make sense when you study it. It's like, what is the purpose of this? This is to deceive. It was created to deceive and make you think we evolved from monkeys. A lot of people don't understand that science tells us we didn't evolve from monkeys, but they want to allude to that. Because as I said, you can't deny it. When you look at apes and you look at us, you see that similarity. So a lot of people just sit and be comfortable with that. But there are some things that don't fit. Like the main thing being, we don't see no damn monkeys evolving. We don't see it. So they say, well, it takes billions and millions of years for them to evolve. Well, it should be some monkey somewhere that had began to evolve. At some point, they've been around on Earth for millions of years. How come we haven't seen one begin to evolve yet? What's going on? And you, some people think, well, wait a minute. They don't live for millions of years, so how can they evolve? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yo, it's crazy. But this chart is wrong. It should look more like this. It should look uh, like exactly what the research t- is telling us. And that is one, if you don't know what 97% of our DNA is, and you can't match that 97% of DNA with anything on the planet, because understand when they tell you this, they think y'all so stupid. When they tell you that 97% of the DNA is junk DNA, we don't know what it is. And the whole thing is, well, wait a minute, it's DNA, right? It's supposed to be human, right? So, you know, oh, then they say, well, it's non, uh, protein coding and non enzyme coding. That's the excuse they give you, but it's DNA. You should be able to break it down and tell me what it is. 
So since they think we're stupid, they just say it's junk because they're not going to tell you that it's not from this planet. It's extraterrestrial. And uh, yeah, they're trying to hide that from us. Now, when I was researching this, I had to be 100 percent clear about what they said about uh, us evolving and um, us not evolving from primates, but sharing a common ancestor. Because, you know, when you're looking at the whole thing, it's like, what the fuck does that mean? It doesn't make sense to me. Shares a common ancestor, then, then where? Because when you look at the evolutionary line, what does ancestor mean anyway? What does ancestor mean? Somebody who came before you. Okay, so when we go back and look, okay, where did it come from then? So if we share a common ancestor, what is that ancestor? Where is it? It's nowhere in the evolutionary path. So we don't know what that is. And to explain that, they just don't talk about it. So now I want it to be 100% clear on what they were saying. You know, take a look. So now, as he said, we share a common ancestor. He doesn't elaborate on what that common ancestor is. He doesn't tell us what it is, uh, believe it or not. Nobody does. They don't tell us. Now, notice when you look at uh, Australopithecus, it basically has, as I said, as, as I said, it has that line that's coming from chimpanzee that should not be there. That line should be gone because it is implying that uh, Australopithecus evolved from chimpanzees. And of course, Australopithecus did not evolve from chimpanzees. And the truth of the matter is they have no clue where uh, Homo Australopithecus came from. Now, what they do know is we have uh, Australopithecus afarensis and Australopithecus africanus, and they know that they do share some common features, but they have no clue where the hell it comes from. And when you go to the Smithsonian website, it tells you exactly that. So now pay attention to what it's saying because it's kind of crazy. It says, below are some of the still unanswered, pay attention, still unanswered questions about Australopithecus afarensis that may be answered with future discoveries. So uh, Australopithecus africanus is currently the oldest known early human from South Africa. Where did it come from? See, they don't know where it came from. Was it a descendant of Australopithecus uh, from Eastern Africa? Is uh, Australopithecus africanus part of the lineage that led to our own species homo sapiens now to me right there that's huge because they're asking the question is it meaning they do not know how don't they know and they give us this evolutionary chart because they have no clue where it came from so how can you tell us that we evolved from this when you are saying clearly on the smithsonian's website it's unanswered. We don't know where it came from. We don't know if it evolved from uh, Australopithecus uh, afarensis. We know it's part of the uh, Australopithecus family, but we don't know where it came from. We don't know where any of them came from. So what is this whole evolutionary scale y'all giving us as to the uh, answer of how humans evolve? So they're telling you on the website, it's bullshit. So now that line should be gone. That evolutionary line should be wiped out. It should be a question mark there because you don't know where Australopithecus came from and you don't know whatever the missing link is, where that came from, what it evolved from. So now we got to look at the rest of this stuff up here and because it's, it's, it's crazy. So how 